I'm Tim Hunsinger, industrial designer and founder of Exoto. There was this one day that I was at a library at a local college where they were presenting these small models of, of Ford trucks to a bunch of people in suits. I went and talked to one of the instructors after it was over and I asked him what was going on. He explained that this was an industrial design program. They were designing these trucks for Ford and they were presenting them to Ford design executives. And uh, I remember thinking, man, that, that's really cool. Like, that's what I want to do. After my neighbors say, uh, well, what exactly do you do? I say, well, I design cars. Oh well, yeah, I know, but what do you really do? So the thing that gets me super excited about um, industrial design really is like the complexity of moving people from point A to point B and the interactions of the human body with the physics of moving. So I've been back and forth between aerospace and automotive for most of my career. I've worked for NASA and Boeing and Kitty Hawk. It's, it's really challenging to be able to understand all of the, the deep engineering physics necessary to make a flying vehicle and at the same time figure out how to make it simple and beautiful and, and make it something that's really desirable. The ideal project would be one where it gets people um, to think differently about the way they do something. And for me particularly, it's, it's transportation. How to get people to travel in a way that's, that's more efficient, that uh, makes their life better, makes everybody's life better, is more sustainable, is better for, for life in general. Transportation is like the broken window syndrome for me. You know, when I look around and I, I think about how many hours a day I spend sitting in my car instead of doing something that would really benefit my life or my family's life, that's one of the things we can fix. We should be able to fix. I've been riding motorcycles my whole life and, and I was uh, trying to get home one evening after a severe snowstorm and every time I got on my motorcycle uh, I, would, I would go straight and then as soon as I would come to a stop and try to turn, I'd fall down. And I did that on every turn the entire way home. After dropping the bike like the sixth or eighth time, I was like, man, there's got to be a better way. Like there's got to be some way that I can figure out how to design a vehicle that still gives me all of the benefits of parking and, and convenience of a motorcycle, but that just doesn't fall down in situations exactly like that. This was the basis for my thesis at Art Center, how to make a four-wheel vehicle lean like a motorcycle. And so I actually designed a, a four-wheel chassis, a car, that was capable of leaning the same as this into a turn. That's where this started. For me, being able to, to find like a really complex problem and figure out a really simple and elegant solution for it is what I'm always working for. So in this circumstance, it, it's been really, really exciting taking something that I know a lot of manufacturers have worked on for a really long time and finding a solution that people enjoy and appreciate and, and seeing that look on people's faces when they ride it for the very first time and realize that this is really different. I imagine we're going to see these vehicles all over the place. And I also imagine that as these vehicles become more popular, more motorcycles will be designed with this type of architecture, where you have front wheel drive and you have stability systems that actually make riding much easier for everyone and much more enjoyable for everyone. Uh, that's all that any industrial designers ever wanted to do, right? Just make something that's amazing and make something that other people enjoy. Currently, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time uh, doing test rides with people to kind of gauge those reactions and get their responses about what they like and what they don't and being able to kind of perfect the vehicle. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hmm. Let's do this! So I'll start at the beginning. Um, one of the things that's really great about this is, is it's all electric so it allows you to uh, do controls that you wouldn't normally be able to do on an internal combustion. Uh, for instance, um, if you pull the brakes it shuts off the motors so you can't do any, uh, you can't do any acceleration as long as the brakes are engaged. I won't explain more than that, but uh, one of the other things that's really great about this is it's self-stabilizing. So it has a self-stabilizing mechanism that, that tries to keep you up. But one of the drawbacks of that is it's trying to keep you up all the time, even when you're trying to lean. So you basically need to tell the system that you want to lean. So when you're leaning, you, you have to purposely lean in to the lean. Taylor's going to have a grand old time with this. Yeah. So you'll, you'll feel it at first and it'll feel a little weird like, oh man, like it's not doing what I want it to do. But if you just trust the system and you just lean into it, it will hold you up even on this slippery you floor. You lean into the turn just like if you're riding a motorcycle 
just, but you do it a little more than you would on a motorcycle. And even at three miles an hour, it'll keep you vertical. Um, you know, at, at higher speeds, it's actually easier to lean in, but with this, you don't even have to worry about it. Just lean into it, and it'll hold you up. Okay. So that's that's my basic spiel. What's a, what allows you to lean into it? Like what is? Um, so it's all about the leaning mechanism back here. Uh, Typically, this is set up for three-wheel drive. So these are these are wheel motors back here. That mechanism back there allows you to spread your track as you're leaning into a turn, so you have more stability in a turn. Okay. And the biggest thing is you have front-wheel drive. So putting the power in the direction where you want to go means it doesn't matter what happens back here. You are always going to go where you want to go. Whereas on a motorcycle, if you have all the power in the rear, um, where you're pointing where you're pointing your front wheel may not matter because that rear wheel will power you into a slide or, or some other thing that uh, isn't where you want to be. So having this be front wheel drive is, is like 80% of where the stability and joy of riding comes from on this vehicle. So just pull the handle and it'll pop. There you go. So you're good to go. Uh, I've found with stability, you want to keep your feet off the floor as much as you can. Just put them on the, put them on the deck and you're, you're good. It's just super fun. Um, being able to be out in the air and, and be in your environment and actually enjoy uh, your environment is a lot more fun than being stuck in a car. You know, I'm, I'm hoping to, to kind of give people an opportunity to reevaluate their mobility choices, give them another option other than a car to get around. As long as you've found a really good problem, as long as you keep hammering on it, you can find a solution that makes it better. It's those incremental successes and being able to measure those incremental successes that actually keeps you motivated. Because you, you start to see that you know you just need a few more of those until you have something that's great. And, and keeping your eye on greatness, I think, is also what makes life worth living. Like, you know, if you weren't working towards something that was hard, it really wouldn't be that engaging. Like, it wouldn't be that much fun. So finding really hard, engaging problems is what makes life exciting.